Happy Horror Nights, everybody. Halloween Horror Nights 33 is here, and this is the video you've all been waiting for. In this video, I'm going to go over my thoughts on Halloween Horror Nights 33, talk about the best and worst of this year's event, what I liked and what I maybe didn't like so much, talking about and ranking the haunted houses, showing off the scare zones, rating the food, and so much more. I have a lot of thoughts on this year's HHN, and I really wanted to wait until I went to the event more than once to deliver a comprehensive review for you. Whether you're someone who's been already and you want to hear my thoughts, thoughts about this year's event or you're someone who is skeptical about going or is going and just wants to know what's good, what's worth checking out. This video has got you covered, but I do want to say before we jump into any of the specifics that this video will be divided into a spoiler free section and a spoiler filled section. I will of course be sure to warn you when spoilers are coming up. I'm going to have timestamps in the description for everything, but I just wanted to let you know at a certain point we're going to go full spoiler mode. And by spoiler mode, I mean spoiler mode. I'm going to be showing footage from inside of the haunted houses. Big shout out to Ryan from For the Love of Theme Parks for allowing me to use his footage he gathered on Media Night. I'll have his vlog from Media Night as well as a vlog from Premium Scream Night down in the description below. Go check out his channel. He does really great theme park content, Halloween Horror Nights, yes, but also Universal Studios. He does some really off-the-wall history videos that are a lot of fun. So be sure to go check out For the Love of Theme Parks and let him know Dreamport sent you. But anyways, I spent too much time yapping and we have a lot to go over, so I won't waste no more time and jump right into my review, the best and the worst of HHN 33. Just starting off with some general thoughts, I really like this year's event. Obviously, I love HHN, so I'm gonna really go in with a positive mindset regardless of what's actually coming to the event, but I will say I was very pleasantly surprised by the quality of this year's offerings. Jumping right into the main attraction, the haunted houses I think are the best thing at this year's event. I think this is the strongest slate of haunted houses that I've seen at Halloween Horror Nights. Really, all 10 have great moments in them. It's not like previous years where I've had a couple that I'm like, oh, I'm not a big fan of this. No, I really have had a great time with all of these haunted houses and it was so hard to pick favorites. I think the biggest trend that can be found in most if not all of these haunted houses is how they deliver something expected in an unexpected way. A lot of these houses are much more than meets the eye and I know while that might turn some people off from some of them, for some it really made it more compelling for me. I also think the haunted house quality is so strong this year. I don't think we have one single haunted house that feels cheap, that feels rushed, that feels like the set design isn't fully developed. All of these houses top to bottom have great set pieces, great special effects, and some amazing surprises, hence why I wanted to talk about them without the context of spoilers. I'll have to say Slaughter Cinema 2, Ghostbusters, and Major Sweets are my current favorites. Those were ones I was expecting to be favorites, so I'm not too surprised there. But houses like Insidious, Goblin's Feast, A Quiet Place, and the Museum Deadly Exhibits all really surprised me. They took concepts that could have felt basic and repetitive and really amped them up to be something unique, and I really like that. As I mentioned before, the haunted houses are the best thing about this year's event, which makes sense. The haunted houses are the premier attraction, but they're like really good this year. So if you're a little bit skeptical about Halloween Horror Nights, whether it's the lack of big IPs or the off the wall concepts, I say give this year a chance because these haunted houses are all fantastic. When it comes to scare zones, it ranges a bit more for me. Duality of fear, I don't like at all. I just think it feels kind of basic. I think Sinister and Surreal are cool icons. They have a really cool presence when they're around. And they're by far the best part of the scare zone when they're up there above the Halloween Horror Nights neon sign. And the rest of the scare zone feels pretty bare bones. It's really just a few chainsaws walking around. No hate to the chainsaws. Y'all are doing great with what you have, but there just isn't much to feed off of. As unfortunate as it sounds, I think this is the weakest entrance scare zone we've seen in a minute and I hope they do more with it next year. Next up, let's talk about Enter the Blum House, which is the San Francisco scare zone this year. I think it's cool, it has some fun photo ops, but for me, I don't find myself wanting to come back here all too often. It's mostly the same Blum House characters, a couple characters from The Purge, we have Happy Death Day, The Black Phone, Freaky. If you're a fan of these characters and Blum House as a whole, I think you'll enjoy this scare zone. At the very least, to get some photos with your favorite Blum House characters. It's a fun one, just not my favorite scare zone this year. Swamp of the Undead is a solid Central Park scare zone. I think the Swamby concept is really cool. I like how they're brought to life. I think the costumes are fun. I also think the greatest strength of this scare zone is the general ambiance with the lighting and the sound. It doesn't feel as in your face as Jungle of Doom was last year. It has kind of a lurking presence, which I really like. 
My one biggest complaint with this scare zone is the lack of lighting. I know Central Park is supposed to be a dark scare zone, it makes sense. But here it just feels a bit too dark, like you can't really see what's going on. So yeah, I think lighting aside, this is a really cool scare zone, and I think brings the perfect atmosphere to Central Park. For me though, I think the two icon scare zones, Torture Fair and Demon Queens, are the standout this year. Torture Fair takes that festival gone wrong trope we typically see with the New York scare zones and heightens it to 11. There are so many great little moments here with the torture devices, but also with the cosplayers at this run fair. You got a wizard walking around, you got a guy in knight's armor, you have princesses. Of course, you have the torture stages where little shows happen, and then the big stage where the king, queen, executioner, and sinister all go on there and do some fun little shows. This is exactly what I wanted to see last year with Vamp 69, some centralized shows in the scare zone. And generally, I think the atmosphere is so cool. I want to give a big shout out to the music in this scare zone. At first, I I wasn't sure how I felt about it, and now it's really grown on me. But I think my favorite scare zone this year has to be Demon Queens in Hollywood. I kind of like Surreal more than Sinister, although I think they're both great together. I love the moments that Surreal has with the Demon Queens in the scare zone, and I love just the aggression that the scare actors are bringing here. It reminds me a lot of Graveyard Deadly Unrest, where the set pieces aren't anything crazy, and the scare zone really isn't anything crazy during the day, but at night, it totally comes alive. The costumes here are wild, wacky, and cosmic, in a way that I was really hoping for in Dark Zodiac, so I'm happy we got that cosmic feel here in the Demon Queen Scare Zone. All around, it's kind of a mixed bag of scare zones this year, but honestly, I think Torture Fair and Demon Queens alone are better than any of the scare zones we saw last year. So in that respect, I think it is pretty solid. I feel like those two definitely carry some of the weaker ones. Doing a quick little speed round on some of the other items featured at this year's event, we have Nightmare Fuel Nocturnal Circus as our single show. I know Nightmare Fuel has tons of fans, so it's great to see it back again. And I think the concept is different enough that it might bring back some people that found the last two years of Nightmare Fuel kind of repetitive. However, if you're not a fan of Nightmare Fuel, I don't see this one moving the needle for you. We also have the HHN Tribute Store back this year. It comes back every year. The Tribute Stores have also become a staple of Halloween Horror Nights and Universal in general. This store is very cool. It's very atmospheric. It brings that apocalyptic city to life. You start out in a convenience store. You go through a warehouse filled with a bunch of HHN Easter eggs. You go through a sewer and end in an abandoned subway station. There's not much I can say about the Tribute Store that hasn't already been said. They really know how to create these super immersive settings to tell the story through lighting and projections. The Tribute stores are wonderful. Can't say this is one of my favorite tribute stores they've done, but it's a cool one and it's designed almost like a haunted house. So if you want that type of experience without the scares, I recommend checking out the tribute store. The Death Eaters are back this year. It's pretty much the same as it was last year, but for those who love Harry Potter and the dark arts, they are there for you. Kind of like a mini scare zone, although it's not too scary. We also got the debut of the HHN bar this year, which is replacing the Peacock bar from last year. Here you're going to be able to get drinks, but also meet some characters from the original haunted houses of this year's event. Characters from Monstros, the Monsters of Latin America, Major Sweets Candy Factory, Slaughter Cinema 2, and Goblin's Feast. And with drinks comes food, and Halloween Horror Nights has been upping their food game over the past few years. There are nine unique food booths themed to the different haunted houses at this year's event, and I'm going to recommend to you three of them that I think are the best so far. Keep in mind, I haven't tried everything at this year's event, but these are just my three favorites. The first one I'm going to suggest is the Insidious themed food booth in the Music Plaza area. My favorite item here by far is the Beyond the Veil mocktail. I don't really drink, so I did not go for the alcoholic version, but the mocktail was very flavorful, yet light and refreshing, perfect for those hot HHN nights. I also really enjoyed the Red Door, which is a sort of hand pie style item with potatoes and vegetables. I'm not sure if I would get it again because it was a little on the drier side, but if you're looking for something very hearty when it comes to HHN snacks, this one's a good option. I also really like the Triplets of Terror food booth over by the Springfield area. My favorite item here by far was the Say Cheese Burger. It's pretty simple, but really works. I couldn't try the Bloody Goodie Bag because it has peanuts in it, but I did get to try the Slasher Sibling Sampler, and this was also pretty good. But by far, my favorite food booth yet has been the Monstros themed food booth just outside the Swamp of the Undead Scare Zone. My favorite item here by far were the Spinal Column Pinchos. These are grilled chicken tenders with the chimichurri sauce. Nothing too crazy, but I think the chimichurri really does add, and the chicken was pretty flavorful as well. Honorable mention also goes to the Wooden Board Eclair from the Quiet Place booth. This wins A+. 
plus for presentation. It looks great and it tastes great and it's also not too expensive, making it a dessert I would highly suggest you check out, especially if you're a fan of those Quiet Place movies. Overall, I think this event is a mixed bag, but I think it's a mixed bag that works pretty well in my opinion. This is definitely one of those years where it's down to taste, whether you're into it or not. I don't think this is one of the big crowd pleaser years like we've seen for the past few years at HHN, but I don't think this is bad by far. I think this is going to go down as one of the more underrated years of the event. Don't be mistaken, there are going to be hits this year. I think Ghostbusters, A Quiet Place, and especially Insidious will be very popular. I also think the same of Monstros and Slaughter Cinema. I think those are going to go down as houses that fans really love. But in general, I don't think this year has the same fanfare that we saw last year with all those big IPs. It's one of those years that you're either into it or you're not, and I'm personally into it. With that being said, I think now is a good point to end the spoiler-free section. We're going to dive right into Haunted House spoilers from this point forward. If you don't want to see anything spoiled for the Haunted Houses, thank you for watching. But for those who don't care about spoilers or want to hear me talk about the Haunted Houses, welcome aboard. Kicking things off, we have the house at the bottom of my list, which is unfortunately this year's Universal Monsters installment, Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodlines. I think the greatest strength this house has is its scenery. I think there are some really great set pieces in here, particularly the scene in the middle involving the she-wolf and the caravan. I think this moment is the peak of this haunted house. I think this is when this haunted house is at its best. It mixes the grand scale with those intimate character moments, and that's a mixture that is signature to the Universal Monsters haunted houses. I really like the music in here. I really like the narration. I think it guides you through the story, but I think truly this house is at its best when you have monsters coming at you left and right. However, for two out of the three runs I've had of this house so far, that was not the case. And that's unfortunate because I really wanted to love this house, but because I've had so many bad run-throughs, it just has to go at the bottom. I think when you have so many characters, it's easy to miss some of the monsters. And I think how they play off the set pieces is one of the best parts of this house. So if you don't get that, I think you're not really going to enjoy this one as much as the others. A similar story comes with our number nine, Monstros, the Monsters of Latin America. I think the sets in here are gorgeous and by far the best part of this haunted house. I really love how you travel through the winding streets of this Latin American Village, it really brings back the feel that I got from Fiesta de Chupacabras, which was one of my favorite houses I've done so far. And when you get a good run through, you can get some scares in this house. The characters are quite aggressive, and I think they're only going to get more aggressive as the season goes on. My biggest criticism with this house is just kind of how it tries to blend the Hollywood original with the Orlando format. The redesigned characters are admittedly starting to grow on me, but I do prefer the Hollywood designs to the Orlando ones. And I think the change to the order in which the monsters appear, putting El Subon before La Lechuza, really kind of messes with the pacing. El Subon is kind of like the big bad of this house. Yes, all three monsters are scary, but El Subon is kind of like the big scary guy. At least to me, he's seems like the scariest one. So putting him in the middle and not like that big bad that you're building up to does kind of spoil his appearance in my opinion. Although I do think it strengthens the appearance of La Lechuza, which has my favorite section of this haunted house. I love getting to see both the La Lechuza animatronic and the giant El Sibone head. But again, because they're trying to blend both the Hollywood house and the Orlando house, even bringing props from Hollywood, it doesn't feel as smooth as it could have been if they had just taken the characters and done their own thing with it. Monstros the Monsters of Latin America is definitely growing on me. I see it as being a very scenic and scary time. It's just also a classic case of there are eight more houses I like more than this one. But who knows, maybe this will jump up the list later in the event run. Moving up to number eight, we have a house that is the true definition of doing something expected in an unexpected way, we have Triplets of Terror. The gore and the slasher elements that you expect from this house are here, and the kills are pretty gnarly. I also notice that this house is becoming more and more aggressive with each run as the characters get more comfortable in their role, and that's great. That's kind of what you want from a house like this. This is kind of a dark, scary house. I say this also in terms of the plot, which is the thing that surprised me the most and probably the most compelling part of this house. It brings this idea of the Barmy Triplets and their serial killer tendencies and mixes it in with a true crime sort of theme. I mentioned that this is a very dark house and it's just kind of a grim, depressing atmosphere from the opening 
opening kill moment, you get the vibe that you don't really want to root for these three. Maybe it's that true crime element that does kind of bleed in, but it really just feels very upsetting. It's very in your face and it's kind of disturbing. But at the same time, the tone feels so different for Horror Nights, especially when it comes to slashers. When you see Michael Myers, you're rooting for Michael Myers because he's the iconic horror villain. Same goes for Leatherface, same goes for Jason and Freddy, and even Chucky. But here it's different, and that's just what's so captivating about this story. This is why it earns this spot on the list. It's not a house I'm flocking to every single time I go to the event, but it is a house that fascinates me and has been getting better with every run through. Moving from an unsettling house to a straight up scary one, we have Insidious the Further at number seven. Believe the hype with Insidious the Further. This house is absolutely phenomenal and absolutely terrifying. From the moment you enter the soundstage, you're walking down that hallway that's familiar to that soundstage location, you see the drawings up in the air, you hear Elise do her little into the further we go chant, you see the giant red door, and then you turn the corner and see the Lambert home. This setup is chilling in the same way that the Haitian market was for Exorcist Believer last year. This house does have some really solid scenery that pulls directly from the films and the world of the further, but the scenery is really just there to complement the scares. The scares take top priority in Insidious the Further. There's some downright terrifying sections of this haunted house, as I mentioned, the build-up, the entrance to the home, and of course that infamous red curtain hallway with the red-faced demon. It's a house that grabs onto you and doesn't let go until you're done with it. It's really long, it's in your face, it's relentless. If you're looking for a haunted house that will actually scare you at this year's event, no matter who you are, I say go straight to Insidious the Further. Moving from a scary time to a more jolly time, let's talk about Goblin's Feast at number six. I think between Goblin's Feast and Universal Monsters Eternal Bloodlines, this house does more with the new tent location in my opinion. You have some really grand set pieces that really can only be pulled off in one of these tents rather than the old ones. And those sets really do a lot to make this house stand out and add to the atmosphere. But it's not just the set pieces, the costumes in here are fun, the wine liners are fun. This house is just overall fun. I don't think this is too scary. I think this house does a really great job in bringing that high fantasy back to Halloween Horror Nights, expanding it while also blending in that traditional Halloween feel. If Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate was a boss battle, this is definitely a side quest, but a side quest worth going on. Coming in right in the middle, we have another IP that totally surprised me, and that is A Quiet Place. The world of this haunted house is something to behold. It's a completely unique experience from any other haunted house I've ever been through at HHN. The closest thing I can kind of compare it to is the atmosphere created by Dead Men's Pier Winter's Wake, where it's ambient. I won't say completely quiet, but it's definitely ambient. And a lot of the scares feel more voyeuristic. You're watching the characters make noise, realizing in your head that something is coming, and then having the Death Angels come out. I love the way the Death Angels were designed. The puppetry in here is fantastic. And for me, each set piece is more jaw-dropping than the last. But this house does produce some intense moments, specifically that first hallway, which is pitch black and soundproofed. That, my friends, might be the scariest hallway in any of the haunted houses, even counting the curtain hallway from Insidious. I think A Quiet Place totally knocked it out of the park. It totally blew me away, and it sits perfectly right in the middle, kicking off the top half of our list. Moving up to number four, I think we have the single biggest surprise for me this year, and that is the Museum Deadly Exhibits. Like Triplets of Terror, it delivers kind of what you're expecting with the museum exhibits coming to life, but I think it does so much more. It almost creates an overgrown apocalyptic style atmosphere, which I don't typically love, but I really like how they handled it here. They really do a great job in blending in scares, whether it's ghillie suits, people blending into wallpaper, or people just generally blending into the exhibits themselves themselves and the costumes. Oh man, the costumes in here are absolutely wonderful. I know a lot of people aren't loving this one as much, but for me, I do. I love history. I love museums. So this is probably the most personal pick that's on this list, but I can't help it. If the Museum Deadly Exhibits has one fan, I am that fan. Moving up to number three, we have a house that breaks the record for the best house in its location with Major Sweets Candy Factory. They beat the Fast and Furious allegations, y'all. This house is wonderful. They truly utilize every inch of this tent to put a scare, a fun little detail, or a gag. There are so many guest activated triggers in here, big red buttons for you to press and something happens. I also love just how campy this is. I think this is the most quotable house this year in my opinion. I definitely feel like this is a house along the lines of a Leave It to Cleaver or HR Blood and Guts. 
house they could have had at the event 10, maybe 15 years ago, and it would have fit right in. And it's just a whole lot of fun. I really hope they keep utilizing this location for originals. I think they were really able to knock it out of the park that way. And I would not be surprised if they're fast tracking major suites to become an icon in the near future. But I don't mind because this house was pretty sweet if I do say so myself. Moving up to number two, we have my favorite IP at this year's event, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Y'all knew this one was coming. This is a house I've been hyped for. I was really excited to see it come to the event and it delivered. This is the big scenic house. This is the big effects house. There are some great scare moments here. I love how Garaka is designed in our haunted house. And I love all the throwbacks. You get to see Vigo the Carpathian, which is absolutely wonderful. Of course, the Terror Dogs, Slimer, and of course, who could forget the many, many puffs littered across this house. Anything that you're thinking they're gonna do in this house, they probably do it. And for that reason, I respect this house so much. I think this is the perfect entry level house for someone who's never been to HHM before. It was my most hyped IP before the event, and I can confidently say it's my favorite IP at this year's event. However, when it comes to my favorite house at this year's HHN, it has to go to Slime. Slaughter Cinema too. It's really close between Ghostbusters and Slaughter Cinema. For a while, Ghostbusters was my number one, but man, Slaughter Cinema just lives in my head rent free. I love so many of the movies they bring forward here. It delivers that classic Slaughter Cinema charm, but adds some really great special effects and scenic elements. In Blood and Chum, you get a giant shark's head that pops out, which is absolutely phenomenal. And in Zyborgs, you're literally going through trenches, a la Nightingales. With Slaughter Cinema 2, the team perfectly struck a balance between what came before, specifically when it comes to that classic facade, and blending it in with something new, elevating Slaughter Cinema to an all new level. This house is fun, it's campy, it's over the top, it's ridiculous, and it's my cup of tea. This is my favorite haunted house at this year's event, and I'm not sure if that's going to change. But anyways, I want to thank you all for watching this review here. I know this is kind of a longer one. Let me know down in the comments below. If you've been to Halloween Horror Nights yet, what's your favorite thing? Favorite house, favorite zone, favorite food item, favorite piece of merch i don't know let me know down in the comments below again huge shout out to ryan from for the love of theme parks for supplying the footage here and i want to of course thank you for watching this video if you like videos like this about halloween horror nights and universal of the past present and future let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel it lets me know that you like videos like this one and you want me to make more of them horror nights is here my friends but don't worry i have some more videos coming up for you very soon but until then i will of course see you in the next one stay spooky enjoy hhn 33 take care everybody